Hi everybody! If you're interested in shaders, you've probably come across the excellent website shadertoy.com, which, at least at the time of recording this video, features more than 81,000 shaders with new ones added every day. Some of them are true works of art, and many programmers have undoubtedly thought about wanting a similar effect in their Godot game. But how do you achieve that? I'll explain everything in this video. Shader Toy is a website, so it's powered by WebGL, that uses the OpenGL's shading language, or GLSL, to code and present the shader effects. In contrast, Godot works with its own version of shading language, and some things are done a bit differently in it. This video is focused specifically on the differences in the syntax and provides explanations on how to convert shaders from one system to another. Let's open Shader Toy and search for shaders with a CC0 license. CC0, okay. Uh, this license is another term for public domain, which means that with such a shader, we can do whatever we want without violating copyright. Always make sure to verify the type of the license before rewriting a shader or using it in your game. So let's browse it uh, for a while and try to find something that would be a good example. All right, this effect looks cool. Let's take a look inside. Okay, CC0 is here and here, so we are free to work with it. Let's switch to Godot and, as usual, create a new 2D scene. So right here, right click, create new scene, 2D, let's call it, uh, I don't know, shader toy for simplicity, create and right click a child node, color act as usual, we'll give it some dimensions, uh, let's say 600, something wrong with, no, okay, 600 by 400, and we need to add a shader material right here to material, click it, and create a new shader, canvas item, and put it to the usual shaders folder, and create, and click to open. Okay, so I'm already working with Godot 4.2, which changed the default template a little bit. As you can see, we have all supported functions here, vertex, fragment, and light, but we'll be using only the fragment one, so we can delete the rest. Okay, fine. Now we'll copy the shader code from Shader Toy to Godot. So, Control A, Control C, and back right here, Control V. Of course, this doesn't work. There will be a lot of errors. We need to address them. Let's delete what's already implemented in the Godot shading language, because, for example, we don't need to define time, time is already there, pi and tau as well. As for resolution, it uses the shader toy specific uh, variable i resolution, which is not defined in Godot, but we will address it in another way. Right now, we can safely delete these four lines. Now, it seems there is an error in this declaration. We are creating a constant of an array type, and arrays are defined differently in Godot. Instead of this, we will use curly brackets. Uh, what's that? Once again, delete, curly bracket here and here. Then the error should be gone. Is it? Of course not, because we are using uh, the mat2 function, which in GLSL uh, expects four parameters, but not in Godot. We need to change it to two vector parameters. Vec2 for these two, and same way 
right here vec2 and and bracket error should be gone great so what's next as you can see the resolution which we deleted it is used here and we will calculate it by divided one by a screen pixel size but screen pixel size is defined only in the fragment function so we must do it here let's delete this comment and create a vec2 resolution is 1.0 divided by screen pixel size okay and let's move everything from the function void image i mean void main image to fragment because this is the main function used by shader toy with some uh, input parameters and output parameters but uh, godot shading language uses only fragment with no parameters so there will be some further changes let's copy this code and move it here and we can get rid of this function declaration okay uh, and we of course need to change the previous parameters like frag chord is actually frag chord in godot shading language but in uh, capital letters and the result is not frag color but color okay of course it's still not working because we need to use the resolution in the custom function color which is right here so let's add a new parameter that would be vec2 resolution uh, so the error should be gone but we of course we need to define it right here oh, okay record is a vector 4 i think so let's use only this xy parameters and color is called here we have a new parameter resolution let's add it here all right and we can see everything is uh, working now and the effect can be seen here let's check our color act okay and as you can see the effect is not centered if i move it it's still at the same uh, place it's because we are working with screen coordinates which would be okay only if we want to display the shader on center on the entire viewport but if we wish to use just a smaller rectangle it's necessary to change the screen coordinates to the local ones let's find it here in the fragment function and instead of screen pixel size we would use texture pixel size all right and instead of this we can simply add it to uv uh, we can simply use uv i mean all right if we move it it stays as it's supposed to but the aspect ratio is not correct looks like there are ellipses instead of circles that's because the texture is actually a square as we can see in the inspector to fix that we need to replace this one with the actual dimensions of the color rect. I'm not certain if Godot has a way to detect it inside the shader, so I fixed it simply by adding a uniform parameter, which we can then modify in the inspector as well. Let's do it uh, here. So it would be uniform vec2 resolution, and let's give it some default value we used 600 by 400 okay so this is the definition we can already see it here in inspector and now let's use it in the fragment function right here and we have it oh uh, that's it and of course, if we change the dimensions of this color rect, we can change the parameters here and keep it uh, with the correct aspect ratio. The process I demonstrated should work for most shaders you find on Shader Toy. Of course, some shaders are more complex using textures as input, like this one. 
or even uh, audio streams, for example. This one, as you can see, there's some audio which drives probably something or it's maybe just uh, background music to make the effect even cooler. And yeah, however, for understanding the basic differences, this should be sufficient. If you want to learn more about this topic, I recommend the Converting GLSL to Godot Shaders page in the official Godot documentation. You can find the link in the description of this video. Anyways, have a great day and see you in the next video.